way? Well, a uh, lot of things. Uh, I think we, had, we have and appreciate all the interest from our stakeholders and the activities that go on. ASFPM has certainly been proactive in reaching in and, and helping us look at some of the things that are happening. And some of these are no surprise. We're going to hear a lot about them during the week, so I'm not going to go into big detail, but we know uh, the Water Resources and Development Act and the relook at the principles and guidelines and principles and standards, or it's really going to have a, a big effect on, on how we uh, build in the uh, water, water projects. And if you'll think about it, the, one of the, the major premise or change to the PNG is that they're going to have to put environmental and economic benefits on the same uh, level, and by the way, risk and safety are number one. So that is that is the lenses I've asked you to look at when you're looking at your floodplain and your watershed. So it's not it's not sideways to that. How it's going to affect some of our programs, I don't know yet. The Corps may has maybe has a better idea of how it's going to affect their programs. But as far as the other federal agencies, uh, it's it's not real clear. But I do know that it's the right idea. So we need to think about that. The executive order on floodplain management, um, very foresightful document, I think, when it came out. Is it time to look at some changes to it? We keep discussing that, and, we're t and we, we do have an active federal interagency floodplain management task force. And for those of you that came to our listening session last week, we thank you and we appreciate it. And we're moving forward with some actions and an implementation plan on that. And it may, in all likelihood, look at the EO, right? Um, so those are things you know. I'm not going to um, uh, go into NFIP, re NFIP reform because there's going to be more on that in a minute. But what about some of the other things that are kind of on the peripheral that's, that aren't just um, floodplain policies or water policies? There's some disaster activities that are going on too. Uh, there's some revisions to Homeland Security Presidential Directive on National Preparedness that, that specifically now the la last version I saw um, unofficially, uh, had mitigation spelled out as an important, important thing to be looking at in preparedness. Uh, no surprise to us, but other, other communities or practice are getting it, and they're getting it from that standpoint. The Committee on Disaster Reduction is still active, and we, we FEMA, have been engaged in all these things, by the way. The Long-Term Disaster Recovery Work Group, De Deb Ingram, Maria Varel, and Angie Gladwell have been serving on that committee. They're have a, uh, we hope the paper's uh, at the White House right now, but I think they've been kind of busy with the oil spills and some other stuff, but we hope that'll be coming out soon. Uh, the Climate Change Adaptation Task Force, and there's a DHS Climate Task Force. We're heavily engaged. We have people when planted in these uh, working groups and sub-working groups. So FEMA is taking it seriously. We are looking at climate change, and we're looking at how that's gonna affect our programs. And these are, these are important building blocks. Um, like I said, I think it's interesting that all these things are coming together now and that they can be used to our advantage, you know, to really build a, a new pro program and a better program. Okay, now I get to talk about the mitigation portfolio, which is, uh, like I said, I'm real excited about. And I'm, I'm going to talk about really three major activities that are going on right now that I think are transformational. I really do. Uh, and I think it's how we need to be thinking, uh, we need to use these building blocks to build our vision. Um, first of all, um, uh, the hazard mitigation uh, uh, granting program has really taken leaps and bounds steps. The unif unification of the program that the team's done has just been great. And I think it's, uh, I went to the uh, national conference in Fort Lauderdale this a uh, few months ago. How long has it been, Deb? <laughs> Two months ago. Time's going real fast for me. I can't keep up. But, um, and it, it was great. It was, such, it was such a great opportunity to see how, how, the, how the locals and the states are really using these programs and making these things happen. We can do just so much at, at the uh, federal and headquarters level. It really takes the uh, execution on the ground to make it work. And I saw some remarkable um, um, mitigation activities that were presented and some good practices. And the next phase of that is, is the portfolio management. And I want to share kind of how I think about that. Um, 
I, I had the fortune of being a portfolio manager for the Corps of Engineers assets for a while, uh, which was looking, instead of looking at one um, uh, thing at a time, you're really looking at the whole bucket and how you organize and balance those things. And so for this granting uh, program, uh, we, we go out and we look at, you know, the individual pieces and we're doing a house at a time or, or a neighborhood at a time. But portfolio management means looking at the whole watershed and, and how we can develop a vision for that. And I, I think back and I think of it uh, when I was a child, my, my grandmother and my aunts used to quilt. Uh, my mother and I liked to sew, we, we didn't like to quilt, but anything we sewed, we kept the scraps. And the scraps were used, and back, this was back, my parents were um, uh, depression babies, so recycle, reuse, reduce weren't, weren't just cool, it was a way of life, you know, that's what you had to do to survive. And so every, every scrap was used, and it took real artisans, these women were really artisans, they took these, these scraps of fabrics and they had a vision for what it was going to look like. And they, they built these masterpieces um, that, that reflected what, what they wanted the product to look like. It was artwork. And so I have a quilt up here. So I want you to think of yourself as the quilt makers and that you're the artisans. And as we move out on portfolio management, how would you like to see these pieces come together? Um, the sec second thing that's going on is uh, NFIP reform. And I'm not going to steal Mike Grimm's thunder because he has a session this afternoon and I invite you all to be there. I think it's exciting. Uh, we had a listening session last fall, but that's not the first time we've heard from, from our stakeholders and people that are interested in the program. And we've been collecting information for a long time and we think it's time to look at the whole package. And so we've dedicated a team in FEMA to pull this all together and look holistically at the program. And again, I'm not talking incremental things here. I think these are transformational concepts that we're, we're going to move forward. Um, I'm, enough said there. I'm going to tickle your interest enough. I hope you go to the session this afternoon. Okay. Okay. Uh, just the, the third thing is risk map. And um, when, when I came up from outside the agency looking in, I guess this was as an engineer and um, geeky engineer and that sort of thing, this really tickled my interest. And so when I got in here, I told Doug Bellamo and his team, I said, I've got good news and bad news. The good news is I'm really interested in this. I said, the bad news is I'm really interested in this. So uh, I look at this as a transformational product too, and we're going to lay the, the foundation here. We have an, a national program that's going to lay down this map, and we're going to do the things we've been asked to do with the, the funds we're appropriated. But I look at it like uh, Apple unrolling the iPad. You have to come up with the apps, okay? This is your challenge. This is an interagency. This is a community. This is a regional challenge. You can build on this product because you're going to be what makes this product good. We need to use it for risk communication. We need to use it for the science. Uh, we need your help looking at this product. And so Greg's giving, telling me I have to wrap up, and I'm at the last si slide. And so um, I guess I would say, uh, there's other ways to say this. I had the good fortune of working um, for the Mississippi Valley Division after Hurricane Katrina as the Chief of Engineers while most, most people were down working the, the New Orleans, um, working in New Orleans, helping clean up. But uh, General Creer often quoted General Honore and he would say, if you keep doing things the way you have been, you'll keep getting what you got. And I guess you could pile on that you're just stuck on stupid, um, but... <laughs> I, th I think Einstein was a, a lot more eloquent in that regards and, and, and says it a lot better. So the time is, is for na to change is now. I do believe the, the moon and the stars are aligning. I think these building blocks are ready to start knitting together. And I think we can start putting the pieces of these policies together. And you are the quilt master. So help us do it and help, help us make this successful. Thank you very much.